back hockey fans, there was one scoring change. The Ducks goal brought the uh, the club within two at three to one. It will now be credited to Chris Wagner on the deflection off the shot from Stephen Whitney. We are now underway as uh, the Kings win the draw and are able to dump it back into the Anaheim end. 3-1 Los Angeles, 12 seconds now remaining on this Ducks power play as Anaheim looking for one last quick rush with the man advantage. They get it deep, far corner. Of course, when they're at four just misses a check. Boy, that would have been a big collision there. It's probably good they didn't hit. And ends up back once again behind the net. Kings clear it off the boards. And we have a stoppage here. Kings uh, now once again killing off another power play here by Anaheim, and their special teams have been impressive so far through these two games. Yeah, they really have. And, you know, when you look at penalty killers, and so many times a lot of people don't really appreciate what a penalty killer goes through. I think the guys that appreciate it most are the coaches, the teammates themselves, knowing guys get in those shooting lanes. They got the ice bags on themselves after the game there. It takes a lot. And the goaltenders out there, they appreciate all the work that's done. And, you know, guys like Nick Shore, he's had an exceptional couple of games here through five periods of play, taking away those shooting lanes, up ice pressure, and making things happen, preventing the team from spending a lot of time in the defensive zone. How about Valentin Zykov right there on that <laughs> four check, getting a good hit in as well. Meanwhile, puck back once again, back in the uh, LAN. We talk about this Dean Lombardi is referenced. Matthias Niederberger now in for Los Angeles. And for Anaheim, it's Igor Bobkov in net. Well, you're talking about building that identity and building that culture. One thing has remained uh, practically, you know, just a given for the Los Angeles Kings of the last two, three seasons. And that has been the penalty kill. That penalty kill has been one of the biggest strengths of the team. You talk about an identity. It's that hard-nosed, difficult to play against defensive style, the aggressive style, I should say. Uh, and that's uh, right here, showing so far in these rookie games. Puck now comes loose up the middle. We'll give you some of the stats there as well in just a moment for John Gibson of Anaheim and Patrick Bartasak of the LA Kings. Anaheim with the puck in the LA end. Comes loose left side. Now centering feed broken up. And LA now looking on the rush. Now over to the right wing side, chip deep. Zarnik gives a chase. As, uh, he pressures Becker. Good job by Sarnik lifting up Becker's stick. He backhands it deep. He's yeah. going to go off and take a line change. Yeah, Robbie Zarnik does a great job there at establishing position against Becker to be able to get inside. Good job by Jordan Wheel, able to strip the puck there from Gagne. Is LA able to keep it deep? Loose left side. We have a whistle here. And a penalty coming up once again. There's going to be a holding call. It looks like LA. We'll be going back uh, on the power play here is Gagne after he turned the puck over. He's going to be heading to the penalty box. Yeah, a lot of times that's a tendency of a player that has just turned the puck over. They try to recover and, you know, make good of things, and they latch on to a player, and he'll go to the penalty box. And uh, the Kings here, they'll go on this power play. It comes just two minutes in, so they've got some good fresh ice out there. And the magician, Jordan Wheel, he'll be out there to take the draw. And as he did when the Kings scored the power play goal back in the first, he won that faceoff that led to the Kings' quick movement to getting the goal eight seconds into it. It's Anaheim able to win the draw and send it all the way back into the LA end. Shots on goal, by the way, for the Anaheim Ducks. When you're talking about in net for LA, Patrick Bartasak in the first two periods, he stopped 25 of 26. John Gibson stopped 9 of 12 for Anaheim. This time it's Bobkov trying to clear it out of the zone. Couldn't get it past the blue line. Contested puck now near side. Comes back into the neutral zone. And so he's sent back up the middle. Here's Wheel. This little shift to the right side. Kozin back to the right point. Right back to Kozin. Kozin top of the point now. That's now Roach. Roach top of the point. Ebert shuffle pass. Kozin back to Ebert. A shot. Good block there by Max Freeberg. And he's going to stay on. Looks like he took that one off the knee. Yeah, good movement there by the Kings. They moved the puck, and you really have to credit Freeberg for staying in that lane. He was able to track that movement to make the save. One-timer there by Colin Miller, who's shown himself nicely, both in development camp and rookie camp these uh, last couple of months. As he keeps it in at the right uh, point. A battle for the puck. Centering feed comes loose. Wheel, right side, wheel. Centering feed trying to push it through towards Zach Leslie, who had pinched in. Unable to get a clear shot off. Kings maintain possession. Goes in top of the right circle. Leaves that for Leslie. Leslie once again backhands it far side. That's going to be Miller. Miller to his right. Now back to Leslie with a one-timer kicked aside. By Bobkov. Now back over to the left point. Sent deep down low once again. That's going to be sent back towards the top of the point. Kozin was looking for Miller. Couldn't find him. 21 seconds remaining on the power play. 
Is that both teams will change it up. Yeah, you look at Bobkoff there. If you thought Gibson was a big presence in the net at 6'3", 226, Bobkoff, he comes in there 6'6", 230, and he's had to make a couple of big saves here with his Kings on the man advantage. Bobkoff already has a win in his NHL career from two years ago. And the Ducks uh, had uh, problems with both of their goaltenders. It was Jonas Hiller and Dan Ellis at the time, and he came in and picked up a win in a game over Columbus. Meanwhile, the Ducks kill off the penalty. At the L.A. blue line, battle for the puck, Zekov. Zahid carries it left side, throws it deep, tries to go in on the four check. Tries to make a hit behind the net. That's going to be Campania, excuse me, Campania. Trying to go back to Kubalik, left point, wrist shot, gets through, saved by Bobkov, and that'll stop the clock. 3-1 L.A., 15-33 remaining here in the third period. Well, the Ducks here with some big goaltenders in the net for them tonight, and Mopkov again, Gibson only faced nine shots, or pardon me, 12 shots through two periods of play. Nine of those shots coming in the second period. But off the bat here in this third period, just uh, four and a half minutes in, Bobkov's been a lot busier. Kings have had a power play. They've gotten some shots through from back in the blue line. A couple of shots there down in tight, but his movement has been very good, especially for a goaltender that's been on the bench for a while. Zarnik on the draw, it's the Ducks that win it. Gagne, though, as he's pressured there over the tier sign by O'Neill. Horvat off the boards, back up the middle. Wagner pressured off the puck, taken away by O'Neill. I like so far this Kings pressure. They're quick to the puck here in this third period. Of course, having that power play time will allow some momentum to fall over on your side. Good hit over on the far side, a little bit away from the puck, but L.A. maintains possession. Can be blasted, rimmed around over to the far side, keeping that one deep for L.A. It's Kabalik behind the net. Ducks take over now. That's going to be Wagner. Wagner over to the right wing side. That's now Horvat. Horvat centering pass ends up behind the net over to the near side. And Ducks couldn't keep it in the offensive end. It was off of a duck. The Ducks pass, so no icing here. Didn't even get to the goal line. And that's going to be Becker. Becker off the boards. Back into the neutral zone. Horvat up the middle. That's now going to be Whitney sending it deep into L.A. territory. In L.A. end, Cramarosa battling for the puck. And we've got another scrap. And that's going to be Scott Sabarin. As he's going with Horvat. Sabarin has a little bit of size on it. Sabarin out of a suburb of Ottawa, Ontario. He lands a couple of lefts. Sabarin, earlier this year, signed to a two year contract by Manchester. Last year in Oshawa. 30 goals in the Ontario Hockey League, and they're still going. I think when you look at that one there, Sabrin definitely get the upper hand on Horvat. A couple of times, it looked like Horvat was trying to tap out. Sabrin taking advantage of the size advantage that he had. And you look at uh, Horvat as he makes his way to the bench. He's got a bloody mouth as he removes his mouth guard there. So definitely some of the uh, work that Sabrin did landed in that one there. And give the uh, decision to the Kings there. They lead on the scoreboard 3-1, to one, and they won that battle there at center ice. Rugged roll that Sambrin has played so far this evening on the Kings' first goal tonight. The power play goal by Alex Roach did a good job screening John Gibson. I know I think we have a, uh, several members of the Sambrin family listening in just outside of Ottawa. So hello to everybody back in <laughs> Ontario. I guess uh, the Toronto Blue Jays season right now at this point isn't uh, quite uh, all it was uh, built up to be maybe. So uh, why not? Watch some uh, L.A. Kings, Anaheim Ducks rookie game hockey. Yeah, I think when you go, you know, looking at Scott Sabrin, you look at his statistics from playing there last year in the OHL in Oshawa. 30 goals, uh, very respectable numbers. Uh, he also comes up with 142 penalty minutes, and we saw him fight the other night in Anaheim. We see him get involved here with Horvat just moments ago, and he's a willing combatant out there. I, you know, I, you know whether or not he can go against the, you know, the heavyweights in the NHL or in the American Hockey League, only time will tell, but he's done a great job at handling himself in all elements of the game. Uh, he's getting to the front of the net, providing screens, taking the body, and he's got a lot of different dimensions to his game. And he'll look for his uh, first full season in professional hockey this year with the Manchester Monarchs. So you're talking about some of the stories. We want to touch on the defense, too. We didn't get a chance to talk about that over in the intermission. Um, but it does look like there might be some minutes available alongside Matt Green. And again, a lot of names, a lot of competition there. That's going to be another story to watch in training camp. Yeah, there are. You know, you look at the Kings. You know, they extended a contract of Keaton Ellerby. They went out and acquired Schultz. 
Uh, you know, Alec Martinez again, he was re-signed. Uh, you know, you know, we look at Jake Muzzin, you look at the year that he landed last year, you know, is he going to be able to become a regular in the National Hockey League? So I think, there, you know, there's some time to be eaten up out there, and the Kings are going to have some tough decisions on that defensive position. Nine guys competing for the starting six, uh, six jobs. And I think probably to start the year, in, uh, if I was uh, guessing, I would think the Kings would start with eight defensemen. So uh, I think there's going to have to be one guy out of that nine move. Good battles, good competition coming up this year at camp. We've already seen great battles here at rookie camp as the Kings break it through the neutral zone. Here's Zarnik, who's been impressive tonight. Nice little dipsy doodle backhanded shot. And that's turned aside by Bobkov. Good job driving the net there by Zarnik. Comes loose, gets in with a shot. And a good glove save there made by Bobkov, who's found his rhythm well in this game after the Kings able to score four goals against him on Saturday evening. Yeah, you take a look at the initial rush there. Uh, Zar Zarnik coming in, he ends up beating Lindholm there into the inside. Lindholm going for a little bit of a fake there, a little drop of the shoulder, and then he got a nice shot off. Bobkov makes the save, and then Kitson with the second bid. That coming right between the two faceoff circles, prime scoring area, and Kits uh, pardon me, the goaltender Bobkov gets his glove on the bid by Kitson. Important for the Kings to have Kitson back in North America. He's played on six different teams since 2010. And I know uh, given the tutelage he'll receive, whether it's from Mark Morris and from all the development coaches, from Mike O'Connell from Nelson Emerson, penalty coming up here on Anaheim, uh, that he's going to have the uh, the best possible teaching that he can receive. Meanwhile, shot loose out in front. Ducks touch it, and L.A. back on the power play here, leading 3-1. to one. Yeah, go back to Kitson out there. You're, you're right. You know, you talk about as many teams that he's have, had played for in the last few years, and there's so many different directions that you have to take. I think getting over here, playing in the North American style of hockey, going under the direction, and the tutelage of the Kings development squad, the coaches in Manchester. I think he's gonna get into a position here where he's gonna be able to take his game to a next level. Watching him the other night in Anaheim, I thought he struggled a little bit, trying to make some adjustments, but here already in this game, and I know it's only one game, not that he's done anything spectacular, but he seems to be making some strides in the right direction. Colin Miller gets one through, turn aside Bobkov. That's Zikov back to Miller, near side, Leslie, top of the left circle. His pass broken up, here's Freeberg with a chance to break in the L.A. end. However, L.A. closes the gap, takes the puck away. Leslie, long stretch pass, right wing side, didn't quite connect. The Ducks turn it over, here's the right wing, Nick Shore. Seen him impressive on the penalty kill, here he is on the power play. Far side, Miller keeps it in, far point. But, uh, unable to hang on as the Ducks can't clear. Ooh, that was kept in. It looked like right at the blue line, but just, oh, it's a hand pass, excuse me. Yeah. As it comes, uh, get a face off back in the neutral zone. 123 left on this Los Angeles power play. Yeah, I think everybody in the crowd was reacting as well when they heard the whistle because we all clearly saw the puck was right on the blue line, but it was a hand pass that brings the face off outside. Talk about Nick Shore getting rewarded with some time on the man advantage because of the efforts on the penalty kill. I think the key is when a player makes that transition to go from the penalty kill to the power play, you have to approach the power play with the same work ethic that you do on the penalty kill. I think if you do that, that's when you'll see the most successful power plays in the National Hockey League. That's, well, this is coaching. That's it's. You know that you're going to be coachable when you're able to be positionally sound and being having the offensive awareness and utilizing that, the man advantage, whether they're on the power play penalty kill. Well, that, that shows it. You're listening to what's being taught you. You're being rewarded with a time from some hard work as well. 49 seconds remaining on this LA power play. Near side, Kozin drifts down low off the end boards. Andrea back to Kozin behind the net. Backhands it. Now near side, Forbort. Forbert trying to go down low. Hit Kozin's stick. Flex to Zahn, and Zahn clears back into the LA end. That's one thing right there. As you see Kozin move that puck around the point back to a Forbert. What you want to look at is you want to look at the defenseman that's on the ice. A left-handed shot, right-handed shot. You want to give it to him on his forehand if you can. Force him not to have to pull it off the boards on his back end. What that does is it gives that penalty killer that split-second extra time to get into position and possibly get the puck out. The battle over on the far side by Kabalik. The Ducks able to come away with the puck and clear it back into the LAN. Seven seconds left on this Los Angeles power play. On the far side of the ice, LA... Breaking it loose off the stick of the forward. Kitson comes back to Bobkov. He covers up, and that'll do it for the power plays. We have a stoppage here, 11-21 remaining in this third period. 3-1 in favor of the LA Kings. Well, a stretch pass there headed for Max Kitson there at the offensive blue line. Puck jumps under his stick, but a good read 
by the Kings, understanding exactly where the Ducks were at the end of that penalty kill, trying that stretch pass, trying to get that break directly into the net. They do get a little bit of a bounce as the puck goes directly on goal, which creates an offensive zone faceoff. Puck held in after the Kings win the draw, sent back behind the Ducks net. Over on this near side, Helgeson over to the far side, Hampus Lindholm. Lindholm played in the elite Sarian this past year with Rogola BK. He comes all the way back towards Niederberger, who hasn't had a ton of work. And you know what? This is just like that other game back on Saturday night as the game progressed. More action in the Ducks' end. And you've seen the Kings able to get in, get aggressive, get the puck deep, and dictate much more of the possession as uh, the game has gone on. Yeah, that, you know, that uh, probably has to do a little bit the way they've been prepared, uh, the coaching standpoint of it, and also the team element. I think the Kings have done a great job at establishing that work ethic, not only in this year's training camp, but going back into the prospect camps. And I think the level of play that they play at, I think, is showing, especially in the third period of these last two games against the Anaheim rookies. Puck still deep in L.A. territory. Good loud crowd here at the Toyota Sports Center here this evening. His admission, $5 donation to the L.A. Junior Kings program. The Kings now looking to break it out of their own end. Near side, Puck still in the neutral zone, sent back up the middle. We're going to be seeing an Anaheim push here coming back. Of course, they lost 6-1 back on Saturday evening in their own building in front of over 7,000 fans, and they're going to want to salvage something uh, more than two goals so far for this weekend as uh, we're looking as a pass up the middle could not connect with McLeese but it deflects to Shore. Shore top of the left circle wrist shot good shoulder save Bobkov and deflects over the far hash marks back to the far point Roach with a shot down low Shore deep shoots Bobkov cuts down the angle comes out makes the save and a whole lot of push and shoving and face washes yeah good play there from back in the blue line as Shore who was in front of the net he got the puck and instead of tipping it he was able to handle it as a pass, and it looked like he had Bobkov beat when he pulled it over to Bobkov's right. I think he overplayed it, maybe stick handle one too many times. That allowed Bobkov to recover. He ends up putting the puck underneath the goaltender, and we get a stop at your play. Is that Roach from the left point? Yes, good it was. job keeping yep. it in. Yep, Roach. So he's, he's been impressive this evening. He's done a pretty good job. You know, I think from some of the adjustments after going through the surgery in the offseason, I think one of the things that he has done well has managed the puck on the offensive blue line. We've seen him score a goal from back there. We've also seen him get a tip in Tanner Pearson the other night in Anaheim. But more importantly, I think it's just that confidence, and that's the easier part of the game is the offensive part of the game, playing out of your own zone. I think he's conquered that pretty good here in the first couple of games. Shore wins a draw. Roach with a shot, didn't get through. Deflects and a high into the air, back into the neutral zone. Freeberg getting it back into the L.A. end. There's Roach battling for the puck to the right of Niederberger. His left point, wrist shot through traffic, Niederberger save, and it ends up back behind the net. Niederberger very impressive back on Saturday evening as he covers up here. We have a stoppage once again, 9.35 remaining in this third period, 3-1. You saw Anaheim turn it on really in the last 10 minutes of that game back on Saturday evening. Niederberger signed by the Monarchs. Uh, somebody coming out of the Ontario Hockey League has been impressive for Barry, very high save percentage last year. He's, he's looking to make that next step himself. Yes, he is. And he's not a big goaltender, so he really has to reply upon his reads and his reactions out there. Strong positional play, not giving up a lot of rebounds. He's quite athletic, but again, he's got to compensate for his size. Uh, it looks like he was left in the dryer a little bit compared to the goaltender at the other end. <laughs> it's been uh, this longest sustained pressure here for Anaheim so far in this third period. The Kings looking to make it a perfect 2-0 against their Freeway face-off rivals to the south. The top of the left circle sent up the middle. Forbert, though, able to come away with a puck. Kings can't clear. Kept in by Anaheim. We have a whistle here and a little bit of a scrap. And they're going to be separated. There's a little bit more, uh, even though we saw a couple of fights the other night, a little bit uh, more physical, maybe a little bit more chippier of a game here this evening. But fortunately, we haven't seen no, really any cheap shots, nothing that would really cause a, a little bit of a ruckus here. And now we have uh, Joey Cramarosa squared away with Colin Miller. Yeah, those two players, they separated from the pack. It was Cramarosa here who was trying to initiate this and instigate this. And uh, I think, you know, you look at uh, from the King standpoint, you don't want to get involved in too much of this, but uh, you've got to handle it when it comes down to you. Miller's doing a good job of doing so. Colin Miller, yet another 
player in the Kings system from that Sioux Greyhounds program in Ontario. You look at Jeff Carter from the Sioux Greyhounds, Jake Muzzin, Jordan Nolan spent time there as well. Now Colin Miller having a couple of words with Joseph Cramaros as well. And Cramaroso looks like he's making his way over to Anaheim's locker room. He was cut earlier in the hockey game, and it seems like that has opened up again. He's got some blood on the right side of his face, uh, so he'll make his way in there. I don't think we're going to see him the remainder of the evening, only 9.08 left here in the third period. Remember, as we did the other night in Anaheim after play, we did go to a shootout regardless of what the score is going to be. Uh, they went through a shootout the other night. Again, just a little bit of extra work for the goaltenders and for the players. Gives uh, you know the coaches, management staff a chance to look at these young guys. And I believe it was, what, four rounds the other night, John, that that one went in Anaheim? Yep. I think yeah, it was four rounds. And only yeah. one goal was scored. He scored on uh, Niederberger. We, I even talked to Rob, uh, excuse me, it was uh, Mark Morris after the game that night, and he said, even though the Kings won, Valentin Zikov, he was disappointed that he didn't even wasn't even able to score in the, in the shootout <laughs> that night. You like that. He ticked off a little bit, that he wasn't able to score. It shows that good competitiveness. Yeah, I think in talking to him, you know, and meeting him at the draft, had a chance to, you know, initially interview him there when he came to the prospect camp there in, in July. And then I'll meet him in a training camp. Uh, you can just see a little bit of that evolution, uh, just that comfort. And I think that's one of the things, you know, I was going to mention it when Nelson Emerson was on with us between the first and second intermission uh, periods, that uh, things were a lot different for these young guys coming in now. I think the organizations as a whole, they try to make it as comfortable as possible for these guys. Make them familiar with the trainers. So when they do come, like, if you can imagine if you get a player like Zikov right now coming in from Russia or, you know, from his uh, junior team over in, in Quebec, he's going to come here, doesn't know anybody, doesn't know the environment, his equipment doesn't feel good. But they eliminate all the excuses. They want you to be able to go out there, and as you step on the ice, regardless of what part of the world you're in, it's all common ground for everybody. And uh, I know the Kings, as do a lot of the other organizations, I have the confidence they're all doing the same thing out there. They do a great job at making that transition for these young players. It's just like it's just like Hoosiers, 200 feet long, unless you're in the old Buffalo Auditorium. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about uh, the defense in just a little bit. We come back in just a moment here. 3-1 LA leading 9-0-8 remaining here in this third period. The face-off just outside of LA territory. It's going to be won by the Kings. Gets in. As it goes. Back to Roach. Roach up over the boards on the far side, and we have a stoppage once again. Now, we've talked about some of the questions, some of the competition, and things that we're going to be looking for. Right now, I want to look at one of the periods, the exclamation point. Drew Downey, even though he hasn't put up the points that he put up perhaps three years ago, becoming so much more of a complete defenseman, what are you going to be looking from Drew Downey this season? Well, I look for Drew, uh, again, to take his game to another level, to mature. Uh, you know, in a lot of different ways, both on and off the ice. Uh, we all expect him to emerge as a Norris Trophy candidate each and every year. We expect him to win it a whole bunch of times, and I think we're going to see that. And I think Drew understands a lot, uh, you know, having won the Stanley Cup a couple of years ago, and then understanding what he went through last year, you know, playing against a team eventually that went on to win the Cup, and that was the Chicago Blackhawks, and how much he means to his hockey club and how he's got to manage not only his time with the puck, but his time away from the puck, keeping himself healthy, keeping himself strong, making sure he's on the right diet. And uh, he's taking strides each and every year, but I think this is going to be one of those breakout years in a lot of different ways. And because of that, with a player with his skill set, I think you're going to see the numbers really jump up for him. Again, the Kings as an organization, if they can fill the holes, especially on the left side, that's an area where they haven't contributed much from. If they can get some more goals out of that offense, I think you're going to see Drew Doughty's name being a lot of the assists, getting those guys to puck. So he'll provide the Swedish, need the other guys to do the finish. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I enjoyed that right there. I, by the way, I want to pay attention to one hit over on the far side by Scott Sabrin on uh, Card Raquel. It was a pretty good looking hit over there. Good rugged role that Sabrin is playing. One question for you. Last year, the truncated season, 48 games. This year, back to the standard 82 games. What effect will that have, do you think, on player statistics, just being able to go out, implement systems, uh, whether peaks, valleys, trends throughout the entire league? Well, I, I think, again, we're going to see some similarities just because they're both compressed seasons. Last year was 48 games over 100 days. This year, with the Olympics eliminating almost three weeks in February, you still get a little bit of a compact schedule. But I think this is where you're going to clearly see 
the consistency of players, the guys that have really established themselves, that are true pros, that know how to go them through the rigorous season of expecting to play like 100 games. And that's what the Kings did a couple of years ago. Now you've got to manage your health, and you've got to be consistent. We've also got the realignment this year, so we're going to see some different scheduling. We're going to see more teams more often, and I think that's going to have an impact on the season or the standings at the end of the season as well. Yeah, our passport's going to get stamped <laughs> a few more times this season. Hey. Yeah. Well, that's always good. I, oh, you, yeah. you played in the yeah. Smythe Division, and that's, I mean, that was, you know, the 1980s hockey was a terrific, terrific point just in the uh, overall enjoyment and, and, and flow of the sport, too. We're at a great time right now as well, but. Um, bringing back the teams like Edmonton, like Calgary. Obviously, LA has developed a very good rivalry with Vancouver. Um, and it's going to be good seeing those teams once again come back into uh, into Staples Center like they came into the Forum so many times. Yeah, I think one of the greatest gifts that the National Hockey League can give back to their fans is allowing those fans in each and every one of the 30 NHL cities to see all the stars amongst the league. And we've got a number of the stars with our organization here in Los Angeles. And it's a shame that a couple of the people around the country in Canada didn't get to see those players those great players last year perform and uh, you know unfortunately they don't even get to see the you know the Stanley Cup champion from the year before you know play in their building so maybe not understanding how good a team that that really was the Kings two years ago that won that cup and it's not just the, the big stars obviously we all want to see you know Zdeno Chara come into Los Angeles it, the puck loose out in front of Los Angeles net Kings able to clear it back into the neutral zone but it's the players that are now beginning to develop themselves. I, you know, I want to see someone like uh, perhaps David Dernay of, of Montreal or someone that's uh, getting a little bit better. Uh, perhaps, uh, you know, you look at Carolina, Jeff Skinner. Yep. We don't get to see too often. Have people, maybe they're hockey fans in Washington, D.C. that haven't seen Andre Kopitar in two years oh, yeah. and able to get that uh, opportunity as well. Puck back in L.A.'s end as the Kings looking to get the puck back behind their own net. Battle with Nick Shore, far corner. That's going to be Edom, centering feed, broken up. Now top of the left circle, there's a drive, a shot, save made, Niederberger, backhanded shot, Niederberger hangs on. A good original save there it was made. On defenseman Shea Theodore of the Seattle Thunderbirds program. And as uh, all the uh, we've seen through the first 5-6 you know, so far of these uh, rookie games, the Kings goaltending coming up very big. Yeah, Niederberger does a good job at making the initial save there and moving over to his right and then keeping the puck underneath his pads, waits to get to the aid from the defenseman, eventually gets that probably maybe a little bit of a quick whistle, but you need a little bit of help, and uh, he gets it right there, allows the Kings to settle things down, again, regroup and get ready for the last six and a half minutes. I think also when you look at, too, is, you know, you, you look around the great players of the in National Hockey League, I think now when you look at, you know, league awards, I think some of the Kings players because now the teams back east, you know, in particular the Torontos, the Montreals, New York, and things like that, they'll get a chance to see these players like Drew Doughty, Andre Kopitar, and appreciate how good of players they are. You know, I'm sure they see games from time to time. They hear, you know, broadcast. They hear the Kings broadcast. People talk about them, but I think watching it firsthand gives you a better understanding to see some of these young superstars in the league. A little bit of a touch over on the far side by Edom on Brandon Cozen, just a, a sliver after the whistle. It's a rivalry that goes back a little bit in the Western Hockey League. As uh, Edom with Medicine Hat goes in the Calgary Hitmen. I don't think that there's anything really that had been there in the past before. <laughs> I just wanted an opportunity to throw some of my old Western Hockey League names out there. As the uh, puck comes uh, back after the faceoff is won by L.A. It's going to be Roach over to the near side. As, uh, it's deflected by Zarnik, who's been hustling all evening long. Zahn over to the far side. And uh, it's going to be backhanded by Zahn back towards the L.A. blue line. Kings take over. Sent back up the middle, touch pass, Andrioff near side. And sent back once again behind the Anaheim net. Bobkov had a strong third period here. 3-1 LA, six minutes left in his third period. And it's now sent back up the middle by the Ducks. Race for the puck. The first one there is Roach. Roach checked off the puck. Over to the far side. Now up the left wing. Backhanded up the middle. Good job knocking it down in the midair by Zarnik. Had to come back to pick that one up. Ducks take over now. Nice little spin move by Raquel. Good skill move there up to Edom. Edom, left wing side, couldn't quite get it deep. Top of the left circle, wrist shot, couldn't quite get through. Now a little bit of space for L.A., sent back up the middle, bouncing puck. That's going to be backhanded deep by Cozen. Both teams look for a line change. And remember now, this is the second of the two rookie games, and that's not to say that will be the last time that these young players for both organizations see each other. Very likely we'll see some of these guys pair up 
when the respective NHL exhibition games begin starting on Saturday night across the National Hockey League. Now left wing side, good opportunity here. Centering feed broken up. Loose out in front, O'Neill with a stick on it, couldn't deflect it in. Centering feed pushed down in front by Kubalik. And a good stop there by Bobkov, behind the net Campania. Centering pass gets back to the left point. Forbert, near side, Ebert, wrist shot, gets through. Save made by Bobkov, another whistle here. 3-1 LA, 4.54 remaining here in the third period. It looked like that shot by Ebert from the right point may have been de deflected down at the base of the left face-off circle, but the big goaltender, Bobkov, was in a good position. He was squared up with the shot. Even though he was down at the knee, down on his knees, he stands 6-6, six, six, so his shoulders were probably still up around the crossbar. He was able to absorb that puck in his midsection. Jordan Wheel on the draw, Saber into his right, Kitts into his left. Wheel tried to win the draw on the face on his backhand. Ended up won by Anaheim. There's uh, Hampus Lindholm over to the far side to Smith Pelly. Smith Pelly at the red line, chips it uh, deep behind the LA net. There was a battle going on back deep in LA territory. Now in the left wing corner, back to the left point. Thrown back over into that far corner. And that's Freebird. Freebird. Was uh, hit from the far side by Leslie. As it comes back towards that left point, but LA will take over. Now it's left wing. And it's now going to be Roach driving in. Shot, save made loose, and just shot wide off the rebound by Kitson. Here comes Anaheim. Right through the neutral zone. Rush was stopped up, but it comes back to Lindholm. Lindholm. Nice little move there around Kitson. Lindholm, his shot blocked. And that's going to be backhanded once again. Comes loose, sent down low, shot, redirected, score. And a good job getting that one down low. And on that redirection, it was Stephen Whitney. As Anaheim pulls within one, 3-2 Los Angeles Kings lead. And for Whitney, that's now a two-point night. Yeah, Whitney does a great job at making himself available. Up high, Andrews gets the puck. Making it look like he was going to shoot. He got the defenseman to commit. And then just off to the left side of the goaltender. That's where we see Whitney come into the picture. Gets a stick on a great redirection. And I'm back into it. It's 3-2 to two with 3.50 left here in the third. 16.04 the time of that Whitney goal. So Whitney once again drops it off for Zahn. Zahn up the middle. So his pass broken up. The battle for the puck in the neutral zone. Comes back deep into LA's end. There's Forbert. Forbert between his own circle. And drops it off behind him. Now over to the near side off the boards. That's going to be set deep by Nick Shore. And Anaheim looking to break it out. Pass up the middle, broken up. Ducks can't clear. Bouncing puck sent in on net. Save made by Bobkov. He covers up with Shore driving the net. Stop it here. And uh, an assist on that goal by Whitney. It'll go to Hampus Lindholm. He's been an uh, impressive player I've felt in these two games for the Anaheim Ducks, as he should be. He was a sixth overall pick a couple of years ago. Yeah, and, he's, uh, he's, somebody with some pretty good size, and he, he plays a tough game and can skate. Yeah, he, he could definitely skate out there. And especially, you know, you look at some of the players that he could potentially play with in Anaheim, guys like Getzlaff, Corey Perry. No Bobby Ryan there anymore, but a guy like Tay Mussolini, some great speed, transition games, Count Fowler, those type of players. I think he should be able to adjust and play well with that style. Meanwhile, a shot from the right point just wide by Miller. Some good velocity there. As the Ducks trying to break into the LAM, broken up. Another player who's not in the game tonight this uh, this evening for the Anaheim Ducks is Sammy Vadman, five foot nine defenseman who's a wizard with the puck. Really good job at moving it up ice and has a good shot. The power play specialist here from the Ducks into the LAM. In the far corner, odd angle shot wide, rattles around the boards, and kept deep by Anaheim. Just to the right of Niederberger. And LA takes over. Pass over to the far side, well handled there by Andrioff. Andrioff, shot, turned aside by Bobkov. Shot from distance, Edom, now up to Raquel. Nice toe drag by Raquel around O'Neal. Raquel, far side, sent deep, deflected up off the glass by Niederberger. Now back, once again, deep in LA territory, that's gonna be Roach. Roach behind his own net. Here comes LA, breaking it out, Ebert over to the near side, redirected by Kozin off the boards. And back into the Ducks' end, it's going to be Whitney. Whitney near side, Theodore. Theodore back over to the left. Here comes Anaheim back into the LA end. Pass broken up. Puck chipped deep once again. And we have 2.03 remaining in game two, the SoCal Hockey Futures game, presented by Toyota. It's now once again back into the LA end. Ducks trying to get it deep. 
As it ends up along the boards, inside the point, and the left hash marks. A little bit of a tough angle for us up here, Toyota Sports Center. LA sends it back into the Ducks end. That's an icing call, automatic icing here. As we have a stoppage, 142 remaining, 3-2 in favor of LA. What are the Kings looking to do to be able to close out this game here, Darrell? Well, I think when you look at it, you know, Mark Morris, your team led 3 to nothing at one point. Not that you want to see your team surrender a couple of goals to allow your opponent to get into it. I also think this is part of the, you know, the evaluation. You get some pretty good reasons, guys, to see how they will adjust in this period. Uh, Two-goal lead, you know, coming in this third period. One of the toughest leads in hockey because you don't know whether to keep your foot on the gas, sit back a little bit. I'm not saying the Kings sat back, but Anaheim, they had nothing to lose. They continue to keep coming at the Kings, so you kind of got to weather the storm. You want to make sure you don't take penalties. I think from the key Kings standpoint, if they get the puck into the neutral zone, they've got to make sure they get through that area, dump it in, and when they do dump it in, don't stop there. Pursue the puck. You're your most effective when you defend 200 feet away from your net. First guy go in, take the body. Second guy be in a strong support position. Keep the puck outside the face-off dots. Try to keep the front of the net clear. Allow the goaltender to be able to see the puck. And if you do that, execute that part of the game plan, you should be able to close this one out. 142 left in every face-off in your own zone is huge as well. They'll start off here with the face-off deep in the King zone to the right side of their goaltender. And for Los Angeles on the draw, yeah, again, it's the uh, far side of the ice here. Very difficult to see. They'll be countered by Ricard Raquel, who's been impressive for Anaheim. And the faceoff is going to be contested and sent deep by the Ducks. Now a race of the puck, far side of the ice. Here comes Bobkov out of the net. For the extra attacker, it's going to be smith Pelly. with big body out in front. LA able to get it back into the neutral zone, though, but not past the Anaheim blue line until it finally comes back by smith Pelly. Back over to Edom on the far side. Edom, good stick handling move into the LA end. Drops it off behind him. It's now Gagne getting it deep. Now back uh, once again on the near hash marks, back at the left point. It'll be Gagne. Once again, far corner. Back behind the net to the cry of Go Kings Go. 104 remaining here in this third period. Kings holding on to the 3-2 lead. Walk back to the left point, back up to the right point. Touch pass near side. Raquel with a shot. Loose out in front. And Niederberger shut the door. Comes once again, back shot. Couldn't get through, and it comes over to the left corner. Contested puck. Once again, O'Neal. O'Neal battling over the left wing side near the hash marks. Comes over to Edom. Edom wrist shot just wide on that far post. Rattles around to the right point. Backhanded deep Lindholm. Comes loose over the far side to Andrioff. Andrioff tying it up along the board, sends it back into the neutral zone. Anaheim. Isn't Gagne getting it deep once again? Near corner, McIver around the boards, far side, Edom drops it to Lindholm. Backhanding it, trying to get it deep, he does. Far corner, smith Pelly. 15 seconds remain. Behind the net there as well is going to be Raquel. Also battling is Andrioff in the far corner, loose behind the net. And comes loose to L.A. off the side boards, all the way back into the Anaheim end. There's going to be an icing, but with 1.0.8 seconds remaining, Kings just have to win a face-off. This one looks pretty good for the home side here. Kings, 3-2 lead, 0.8 remaining. Yeah, I think they're going to add some time to the clock here, John. The linesman had his back to when the puck was going across the line. I think it's going to be about three seconds. I look for him to add about two and a half seconds. Wouldn't be surprising. Yep. You look back over to the scorer's table over there as well. And we'll see how many seconds they put back up. Right now they have just 1.0. <laughs> two tenths of a second, apparently. <laughs> And there's the drop of the puck, and L.A. will win this one 3-2. The Kings sweep the home-and-home home set in the SoCal Hockey Futures game presented by Toyota as they're going to celebrate right around goaltender Matthias Niederberger. Now uh, we're going to be going to a shootout here. Yeah, and I was just looking at the Kings bench. Mark Morris, their coach, heading down towards the locker room. All of a sudden he was stopped <laughs> there by, uh, uh, by one of the assistants there, grabbed a hold of him there, and... Brought him back to the bench, letting him know that there is a shootout again tonight. So uh, a little bit of a treat for the fans here. And again, a good chance for the uh, players on their respective teams to go out and get involved in this, you know, in this environment, uh, whether it be the goaltenders, the players that get a chance to shoot. Uh, I think it's just a, a great little exhibition. 
So the question for you now is uh, there aren't officially a three stars of the game, but I want to hear Daryl Evans' three stars from tonight's 3-2 Kings win. Well, I think one of the players that had the biggest impact on, on, on the Kings game, uh, I think, is uh, the goaltender Patrick Bartoszak. Uh, I thought he did an outstanding job. Uh, one of the reasons, uh, stopping 25 of 26 shots, only surrendering one goal uh, to Anaheim. And I think without his performance in the first 40 minutes, I don't think the Kings would be in a position right now uh, where they would, I don't want to say necessarily not win the game, but probably uh, not be in a position where it was only going to be 3-2. to two. I'm going to give one of my stars the game here this evening. And uh, I've liked what I've seen uh, from uh, Nick Shore. We'll get to that in just a moment. Here comes Brandon Cozen on the shootout as he goes first. He goes well wide to his right. Nearly at the boards. That's back towards the center. Squares up. Shoots. Good glove save, Bob Cobb. Looked like Cozen almost went through our booth up here. He, <laughs> he came right down along the boards. And sometimes, you know, you like to change that approach of the attack there, coming in and then moving laterally. What it does is it forces the goaltender to have to move maybe a little bit slow there. And that allowed the goaltender, Bob Cobb, to read him. Here's Stephen Whitney. He's been one of the duck stars this evening. Wide to his left, gets him down low. He tries to do the same thing. Waited a moment too long. Good pad save, Niederberger. No scoreless after the first round of the shootout. Yep. Talking about the Kings' efforts tonight, Nick Shore, somebody that also both ends of the puck, 200-foot game. I was impressed with his efforts tonight. Yeah, I like the way that he played as well. Uh, you know, again, like you said, both ends of the puck, both situations, uh, with and without the puck, uh, solid effort through the entire game. And here's Jordan Wheel, right-handed shooter. Wide to his left, now wide to his right. Now squares up straight away, shoots, he scores! Uh, he's able to go glove side. That kid's a magician, he's got great hands out there. And right there, you could just see him, his head's up the entire time. And the goaltender, Bob Cobb, trying to get a little bit of a read as to what he's trying to do. And then that quick release, scores a goal. There's Gagne for Anaheim. He's almost straight away with some speed. Deeks shoots, lost the handle, couldn't get the shot off. And L.A. can clinch the shootout with a goal here. Perhaps this is a three-point game. Get two <laughs> points for the win and an extra point for the shootout here. Here comes Shore, able to punctuate with strong performance here this evening. He shoots, he scores as well. Glove side just inside the post. And that's going to wrap this one up. I'm sure we're probably going to see one more duck shooter here, though. Yeah, I think they're going to go right through the entire thing, uh, as you do when you're going to have an exhibition. Uh, again, the Kings are going to win this one here, having scored a couple of goals out there. Nick Shore uh, with a nice goal and uh, a little bit of a reward for the efforts that he put forth in the game. Mark Moore selected him in the shootout. Here comes Horvat, left-handed shooter, wide to his right, towards the net. Deeks shoots wide to the net. And this shootout goes 2 to nothing to the Los Angeles Kings. Kings win the game 3-2, to two, win the shootout 2-0. We're going to take a quick break, come back, wrap this one up briefly, and head downstairs. Thanks again for tuning in on LAKings.com, LAKingsInsider.com. I'm John Rosen. Daryl Evans right here. We'll be right back right after this.